Today's video I'm going to be talking about giving up on sleep training <laughs> and this will come across as a little bit controversial I think considering how many videos I've done on the topic of baby and toddler sleep and sleep training videos. I've done a video on how we managed to sleep train James to sleep through the night at around about eight nine months um, but if you follow my channel you know that things went downhill from when he was 12 months old and he just hasn't slept very well. It's been the cause of a lot of anxiety in our house, a lot of tears and a lot of worries, especially from me, um, that we're doing something wrong or that there's something wrong with him or that we just haven't nailed it. And we have come to the conclusion that as a family, sleep training is just not working. And maybe it's time to stop banging on something that is not working and start to just relax and take a deep breath and try something different or not try something at all. It wasn't something that we decided overnight. James is now 19 months old and like I said from about 12 months old his sleep has been absolutely dreadful. He has never been a good sleeper and the only time when he slept through the night consistently was between 9 and 12 months when we sleep trained him and when he was 3 months old and then when he hit 4 months he stopped sleeping. So you know we've had a rough patch with sleep and I know a lot of people do so it's not something that just happens to us and I've always been really inclined to um, to make sure that I'm doing everything that everybody recommends that I do. Um, people that I trust, people that I read online, people that I see that have tried different things. I've tried lots of things. Um, but one thing that has always stopped us from like going all the way with sleep training is that we're not really comfortable with letting James cry it out or do controlled crying. And every time that we've tried it, we've felt worse and we, and it's been worse for us and worse for him. It might be that we're just not ready for it. It might be that he's not ready for it. It might be that we'll never be ready to try this. I think every sleep training method is different and it works for different families for different reasons. And I don't think there is one method that works for everybody. And that's something that I am okay with now and I accept it. And the biggest problem for us was that because I've got baby two on the way, I've got two months until baby girl is due and James still wakes up in the night a lot. He wakes up probably about twice a night and sometimes he wakes really early in the night around about nine, ten o'clock and we manage to put him back to sleep after much, much struggle. Um, other times we can't put him back to sleep unless he goes on the bed with us and most nights he ends up on the bed with us by one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, sometimes a bit later, um, but most of the times is around about that time. So my biggest worry was that because I'm gonna have a newborn baby soon, that baby's gonna be sharing a room with me and my husband and James is gonna be coming in on the bed with us and the baby's gonna need feeding and changing lots and lots in the middle of the night. And so I'm gonna end up disturbing James's sleep and the baby's sleep. James might wake the baby, baby might wake James. And I just wanted everything to be perfect and I wanted everything to be sorted. I wanted him to be sleeping through the night in his own room the whole night before baby got here. But as with everything to do with motherhood, I soon realized that what I want and what actually happens are two completely different things. And that James is not a robot, he is a human being and I cannot program him to do something when he's not ready. And even though I've tried everything, I've tried changing his bedtime, putting it later or earlier. I've tried giving him more and less food. I've tried giving him a soother, a comforter. I've tried, I don't know, less activities, more activities. Everything that people suggested, I did try. And like I said, I've, I've even tried controlled crying for a little while, but just didn't feel right for us and we stopped. And for a long time, 
the the way that we get him to fall asleep at night is by taking him up to his room we put him in his cot which has now got the side out so he's like on a little toddler bed with a side rail on that's removable so he can get out of his bed but he doesn't fall out of bed because of the side rail so we take him up we put him in his cot we read him stories and then we sit there with him and hold his hands because he's always been a very touchy-feely baby he loves holding hands and I mean I can't really complain it's lovely the only time that I complain is when you really can't be holding his hands for two hours or for however however long he wants you to but I just know that in the grand scheme of things I'll probably miss this when he stops doing this anyway so we hold his hands and we give him a dummy and we sit there in the dark with him I say a prayer say good night and I just sit there holding his hands waiting until he falls asleep now this is hardly ideal and I know a lot of people may criticize me for for doing that but this is the only thing in the whole of the 19 months that has consistently worked to get him to fall asleep other things have worked for a while and then stopped working but that's the only thing that he that that gets him to fall asleep and i don't mind that you know if he were to fall asleep doing that and then sleep through the night and wake up in the next morning i'd be happy to do that every night it's not a problem at all the problem is that even after we do that and he does fall asleep, he does wake and he needs us back there with him. But as he's getting older now, it's getting harder because when he wakes, he's so talkative and so active and he wants to get out of the cot, he wants to play, he wants to chat to us and play with my face and, you know, name all the things in my face, nose, mouth, eyes, hair, and he wants me to participate on it. So obviously I don't indulge if he wakes in the, in the night, I'm like really quiet it is business for me if he wakes in the night I'm really really quiet I don't talk to him don't engage with him because I just want him to understand that night time is not playtime and when we do manage to get him back to sleep like this in his cot he will sleep for another few hours and then the problem is he does that again and again and again and he wakes keeps waking and waking and waking and it gets to a point where we have to make a decision am I going to keep getting up and out of bed every time or am I just going to make life easier for us all considering that I'm pregnant and that I need the rest that my baby girl needs the sleep as well and I need to sleep and rest for her am I just going to pick him up at two o'clock in the morning and put him on the bed with us where I know that he's going to sleep yes so that's what we've been doing most of the times and I have felt guilty about it so much because it's, it goes against everything that people say you should do. As parents, as a family, we've got to do what feels right for our family. And I obviously felt as though I needed to try everything before we gave up sleep training. Um, but you know what, I'm just taking an approach now that I think is the best overall for our situation currently and I am not going to stress any more about what will happen once baby girl is here because she's not here yet things have not got to that point yet and when they get to that point if we are struggling with two children in the room then I'm sure we're going to have to make a decision we're going to have to change something and do something differently I watched a very good video by my friend Charlie and I'll leave it linked below where she talks about how her son didn't sleep through the night for 18 months and then now he sleeps brilliantly through the night and I was so so happy for her because I know how difficult it's been for for them to not for, for no one to not sleep and she just gave me like some perspective you know the way that she described her approach um, to sleep training and to to how she handled the sleep deprivation and all of that it just put things into perspective for me and thinking do you know what if my child is not ready he's not ready and if I think he's not ready then he probably isn't and uh, no offense to anyone that gives us advice I know people are only trying to help and I'm very very thankful and grateful for their help but I'm just tired of feeling guilty for not doing things how people think I should do them you know a lot of people say 
or you need to let him cry. You have to let him cry or he will never sleep through the night. And other people say, oh, you must not let him cry. You cannot let him cry. Or they say, oh, you must not put him on the bed with you. You cannot. It's just this, you know, overload of cannot and must not and must do and all of that. And I just feel like, right, I've got to make a decision and I've got to, I've got to be able to live with my decision. I have to do what's best. And as a family, we've decided that the only thing that will keep us all happy and that will make us all sleep a little bit more, we might, we might not sleep a lot when he's on the bed with us because he's so wriggly and takes up a lot of room, um, but we sleep a bit more now, um, is having him on the bed with us when he wakes up in the middle of the night and take each day as it comes. Some days I'm less tired, some days I wake up and I put him back to sleep in his cot and I go back to my own bed a few times in the night. Other days I'm exhausted and I just pick him up and put him on the bed with us. And I think that is fine. I think that is what I've come to the conclusion is that if that's how it's working now, that's how it's going to be for now. It doesn't have to be forever, but for now, we have given up on the sleep training kind of journey. I hope that you guys kind of like understand where I'm coming from with my thoughts. One day your children will sleep so much that you're gonna struggle to get them out of bed. <laughs> Does it sound familiar? Because my mum struggled to get me out of bed when I was a teenager and I struggled to get my husband out of bed in the weekend. So, you know, just put things into perspective and I was thinking, he's only gonna be little for a few years of his life. What's four or five years in a big lifespan of a human being? It's nothing. And that's what I've gotta keep thinking about is that these things pass and they finish and they end and it's knackering now, it's exhausting, but they do end. And they come to an end when they have to come to an end, not when I want them to come to an end. So please leave your comments below on your experiences with sleep training or failing sleep training. Just leave it on the comments below and let me know, you know, how you're handling the sleep situation with your own children. I'd love to know. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos. I'll see you very soon. Bye.